Hello and welcome to today's um, live webinar workshop um, for Crowdfund Angus. Um, and today we're talking about planning your project. My name is Katie Austin. Um, I'm a coach here at crowdfunder.co.uk. And we're really lucky to be joined today by Victoria from Angus Council. Um, she just give us a little wave, Victoria. She's just down in the corner. Um, and she's going to be talking through um, the Angus funds on offer in just a moment's time. So to start off, we're just going to have a little introduction to who Crowdfunder is. So we are the UK's largest rewards-based crowdfunding platform. And we see about 150 to 200 new ideas coming onto the website every single day. Just to give you an idea of how popular um, crowdfunding is becoming today. Um, and we're going to kind of just have a little run through um, the main steps involved in a crowdfunding campaign. Um, so how crowdfunding works. And, and crowdfunding is basically just fundraising um, using a website. Um, so we've broken it down into three main steps. And important to note that we're talking about rewards-based crowdfunding here. Um, there's also equity-based crowdfunding and peer-to-peer um, -peer, um, lending crowdfunding, but um, that's not something that we do on crowdfunder.co.uk, um, but we can direct you to other websites um, that can help you with that. Um, so, number one, come onto the website and create your own unique project page. This is where you explain your idea and where you tell everybody else what you're doing. And then you set a target of how much you want to raise and you decide how long you want to reach that in. So that could be anywhere between two to eight weeks. So we should, we're talking about quite a short, sharp crowdfunding and um, fundraising campaign here. Um, and then you spread the word to everybody you know, everybody that you think might be interested in the idea. Um, and if they do like it, they can donate money towards the idea or they can give money in return for what we call a reward. Now, a reward can mean a lot of different things. It can really vary from project to project. Um, but uh, just to kind of give you an idea, most rewards are um, either um, a thank you, simple thank you, and you can kind of offer different things um, as a thank you, um, just little tokens of gratitude. Could be a project or a service, so if it was a bakery, it could be a loaf of bread. Um, and got sponsorship, um, different kinds of sponsorship. Um, and also an experience or a ticket to an event. But we're going to go into a lot more detail about what you can offer as a reward on a project and what will work best in particular for what you're doing in the next session on creating your project page. So just to give you a little example um, to show you um, really like, hit home what, what we're talking about when we're uh, uh, talking about the kind of project that would crowdfund. Um, so this is Lynn and Rebecca and uh, they're from Street Goats. And they love goats. You can see a little goat there in the back of their van. And they wanted to start an urban goat farm in Bristol. And they decided that crowdfunding would be the perfect way to get some funds to get the idea off the ground. And as you can see there, they raised just over £9,000 in 28 days, just a month, and from 167 people in their local community. So they did an amazing job. Um, and they were offering um, rewards in return for um, financial support. So they had uh, things such as tote bags. As you can see in the middle there, um, they hand screen printed some really cool little tote bags with a street goat label on it. Um, and they also were offering things like um, a chance to go to the farm when it opens and learn how to make goat's cheese. Uh, so it really created exciting rewards um, to get people involved and, and get their ideas started. However, it's not just about goat farms on Crowdfunder. There's a massive range of different kinds of projects um, and groups of people that um, use Crowdfunder to get their idea off the ground. Everything from education, schools, universities, to films. Um, they want lots of money to, to, to bring out their first film. Um, community groups, 
um, and charities and businesses. So a wide range of people that can use crowdfunding. Um, it's really, really broad, um, which is something very important to, to note. So whatever your idea, you should be able to crowdfund for it. So um, really important at this point to kind of ask the question, why would I crowdfund? Why is this the particular way that I would choose to raise money for my project? And we want to say here that crowdfunding is not just about the money. It's really, really important. Um, and for a lot of projects, um, there's a lot of, uh, like another few really key things um, which are their motivation for wanting to crowdfund. The first is validation for your idea and your project for what you're trying to do. Um, thinking back to Lynn and Rebecca with their goat farm, running a crowdfunder project um, really found, let them find out uh, that there are other people who think that running an urban goat farm in Bristol is a good idea. It proved that other people wanted it. They actually put money in their pockets and pledged on it and said, yeah, we want to make this happen. Really key, key validation um, to just really know that it's worthwhile and worth doing. Um, and it's also great, um, a great piece of validation um, having a successful crowdfunding project um, in your back pocket when going um, to apply for other funds, so grants um, or maybe some bank loans, uh, that sort of thing. It's a really great tick in the box for those funders. And another uh, great thing that comes from a crowdfunder project is awareness. Um, it's an amazing marketing tool. Um, anybody who's run a successful crowdfunder will tell you that you cannot help but shout loud and proud to everybody that you know um, when you are running a campaign. And the awareness surrounding what you're doing will increase massively, um, not only during the campaign, but after. Really, a really great way of telling your story and kind of communicating to people what you're trying to do. And next, um, we see that a lot of people that support a crowdfunded project become advocates um, for, for what you're doing. They're in it for the long haul. Um, you know, if they, especially when they've supported you from that early start, and they really want to see um, your idea happen. Um, they're going to come and support you at events. They're going to buy your goat's cheese when you make it. Um, and they're, they're going to tell all their friends about it as well because they're proud of it. They're, they're proud of helping something amazing happen and, and, and they want to get more people involved. It's a really great thing that can come out of a crowdfunding project as well. And then we come to extra funding, which is why Victoria's here today, why we're here running this crowdfund um, Angus webinar. Um, just by crowdfunding, you can unlock access to some amazing match funding pots of money. Um, and we have three funds running with Angus Council, um, which Victoria's going to tell us about in a moment's time. Um, so just by running a crowdfunder project, you can get a lot more extra cash, um, which is really fantastic. So at this point, a lot of people are like, this is amazing. This is fantastic. Where do I sign up? However, there must be some sort of catch, surely. Um, and basically there isn't. Um, it's free to set up. There's no upfront fee. If you do raise the funds you need, there's a 5% plus VAT platform fee from Crowdfunder, and there are some fees from our payment provider Stripe, who you use to take credit and debit card payments. Um, if you want more advice um, and more details on the fees, you can go to our website, um, go to Crowdfunder, and um, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and there in the, in the footer, there's a, a link to fees, the fees page, and there's all you need to know there, um, and then if you have any other questions, you can get in touch with, with us and to ask those. So, I'm going to hand over to Victoria now, and she's going to give us a little introduction to the Angus funds and how to apply for them. So, over to you, Victoria. Great, thanks, Katie, and thanks everybody for joining us today from Sunny Forfer in Angus. Um, so, Crowdfund Angus. What is it? Crowdfund Angus is a partnership between Crowdfund UK and Angus Council. 
And we were the first local authority in Scotland to partner with Crowdfunder UK, which we were really excited about. And actually, we've just celebrated our second birthday with them. So <laughs> we've still got some cake in the fridge if anybody wants some. Yes. <laughs> So in that two years, um, Crowdfund Angus projects have managed to raise nearly £1.7 million. Pounds. So it just shows you the scale of what can be achieved through Crowdfunder. So through the Crowdfund, through the Crowdfund Angus portal, um, which you can see on the screen, um, you will be able to access all the great benefits of Crowdfunder UK and some. So we have some extra additional help, uh, hints and tips for specifically two Angus projects there. So you can go and have a look at Angus projects past and present, get some ideas for your own campaign, see what's worked. Um, there's also Angus specific guidance there that Crowdfunder have kindly put together. So there's, there's three guidance notes, which we would recommend always to have a really good look through them. And there's some great hints and tips in there for setting up your campaign. Um, also, you can access us, Angus Funding Team, for one-to-one -one crowdfunder support, as well as the, the lovely folks at Crowdfunder UK. Um, and match funders. Okay, so through Crowdfunder UK, you can access a number of UK-wide funders, match funders. Mm -hmm. But through Crowdfund Angus, there are three funders that are available for Angus projects only, which is really exciting. Angus Council's Community Grant Scheme, um, which is a community benefit um, uh, grant scheme which can support community projects in Angus. So we can take applications from community projects, community groups, charities, um, and you can um, get up to £1,250 match funding for your project through that fund. So that's that's really exciting and a really good boost for your campaign. Secondly, we have a Rural Decide Leader, which is a European match funder. And they support rural development projects in Angus and are open for applications from community groups, social enterprises and uh, rural businesses. So it's a good one to tap in for any business development in rural Angus. And lastly, we have the, now I'm going to try and not trip over my words here, yes. European Maritime and Fisheries Fund. And as the title would suggest, it is for fisheries and diversification projects in Angus. So um, yeah, so there's our three Angus only match funders that you can tap into through the Crowdfund Angus portal. So getting started. It's really simple, it's really quick. Um, you sign up to Crowdfund Angus and you hit start crowdfunding and you follow the step-by-step -step information, fill in the information that Crowdfunder are asking you to and that will be the start to building your campaign. Then you'll be directed to the extra funds page, which you can see now, and you select your match funder. We would always ask you to check the eligibility of the match funders first to make sure that your campaign matches the funder. Um, and then you apply. We ask you some simple information about your group, about your project, how much money you're looking for, and then you submit to that to us and continue building your campaign. When the application comes through to us, we'll start processing it. And you can apply anytime from pre-launch to live, so you don't have to wait till your campaign's live to apply to us. But we would recommend applying in the pre-launch stage gives us a chance to process your application and hopefully make that announcement of a match fund while the campaign's live, which would help to, to boost some interest and generate some excitement around the campaign. So yeah, we would just really encourage anybody to come forward with any queries about Crowdfund Angus. Um, we're here to help, so thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Victoria. Some amazing advice there on how to apply and details about all of the funds, incredible funds that Angus have got on offer. Um, and as Victoria said, um, there's some expertly trained um, guys at Angus Council who can help you um, with your project too. Um, so you've got plenty of resources to help you through this journey. Um, 
And Victoria also said um, about the other kind of national funds that we have available on Crowdfunder. So definitely have a look. There might be some others that you're also eligible for. So you can have more than one fund pledged on your project as well. Um, it's not if you get one, you can't have any more. Um, so definitely have a look, as especially the Santander Changemaker Fund um, for any projects kind of tackling um, community issues. Um, really great one to have a look at. So down to business. Let's talk about our three um, steps to success. The, we've broken down crowdfunding into three main steps to help guide you through the process. And we're talking about number one today, planning your project, building a foundation for your crowdfunding campaign. And we're going to talk about creating your team, um, about finding your supporters and making a network map and also uh, refining your idea, getting it really clear what you're doing. And in next week's uh, session, we're going to talk about creating your project. So how to make the perfect project page and um, how to tell your story clearly um, and in a really engaging way. And then lastly, um, we're going to talk about our last session. Our third session will be talking about running the project. So what happens once you've gone live? How are you going to get the word out to everybody? Um, and what times and what different ways? Uh, so really both, really three key steps involved in your campaign. Um, also, we I think Victoria mentioned them before, uh, but we have these three amazing guides that go with these three different stages too. Um, you can download these on the Crowdfunder website. They're also going to be underneath this video and if you're watching after, there'll be a little pop-up where you can download them. Um, and you can also see them on the, um, on the Angus page on Crowdfunder and on the Eventbrite page. They're everywhere. Um, so you've got no excuse to go and download them. Um, this, these, each one, so there's three of them, each one's about 10 pages and they're a really great interactive tool. They're like a workbook. There's checklists, um, there's templates, uh, there's exercises that's going to really help you get into the nitty gritty of each stage of the process um, and, and really get yourself really prepared. Um, you can print them off and uh, scribble all over them or you can um, edit straight into the PDF guide as well. They're very fancy and technical. Um, so I really recommend if you haven't done already, go and download um, the guides and you can start reading ahead as well if you want to. They're going to be an amazing um, support throughout the uh, throughout your crowdfunding journey. So, first we're going to talk about creating your team. So, crowdfunding on your own can be quite difficult and quite lonely, so we really recommend trying to get a couple of people in to help you. Um, and we've just broken down here the different, different skills that are involved in creating a crowdfunding crowdfunding campaign. Um, as, and, I mean, unless you are completely superhuman, which some people are, it's going to be very unlikely that you're going to be the best person to do all of these things. Um, you're probably going to need some help. And so you're watching this video, you're probably the project leader. Um, and it might turn out that you're fantastic at networking. Um, and you're also really good with Facebook, you're a marketing whiz. Um, however, your writing skills are a little bit lacking, um, so you need someone to help copy and proofread stuff, and you can't make videos, um, so you're going to have to get someone to help uh, make your video if that's what you want to do. Um, really important in this beginning stages of your project to kind of identify people, get in touch with them, see if they're around when you've done the campaign. Um, it doesn't have to be formal, it can just be your mate um, or a family member who can help out, but just a really good thing to do early on. Okay, a vital thing when you are running and planning your, your project is identifying who, who's going to come and pledge on the project. Um, and, oh, no, actually, we're going to talk about getting your ideas straight first. <laughs> right, so before we think about who's going to support the project, we want to refine that idea. So we know what we're going to talk to them about. So, um, 
you're gonna, you might have the idea really clear in your head, but when you start talking to some, someone about it or writing it down, it gets a little bit muddled. So you wanna kind of pick out the really key points that are gonna um, that, uh, tell someone what your idea is all about quite quickly. We've just picked out four projects here um, to kind of have a look how we break that down. How we've got kind of three things that defined um, the project. And this is going to really help going forward when you create your project page and when you're choosing the rewards um, and you're creating your network map. So first we've got World War I Airedale Monument. And just mentioned that all of these projects are from Angus, from, from the Angus area as well. So you might notice a couple of these, you might, uh, might have seen them or even might have pledged on some. Uh, so we've got World War One Airedale Monument, and um, this is about Airedale Terriers um, that served in World War I um, and on East Haven Beach, and they want to create um, and build it, they wanted to fund, raise money to create a monument in honour of these heroic pooches um, that did all sorts of amazing things to help the war effort. They even carried um, like little cages of carrier pigeons on their back, which I think is amazing. You can see in the picture there, there's a, a little picture of that. So you can really quickly kind of tell someone what, what this project's about, get them excited about it, the key really interesting things. Next, we've got Green Hillock Glamping. Wildlife Lodge. So they were fundraising to build a new wildlife lodge, which was going to, um, so they're an eco campsite as well. Really important. So who are they though? <laughs> you know, and then you know, oh, we're an eco campsite. Um, and this wildlife lodge was going to be where they do all of their wildlife activities and conservation activities from. And they're based in rural Angus. Next, we have Park Brew really easy one to kind of get across to people. They are a brewery who make craft beer um, and they're local, I think they're Brecon, I think I'm saying that right? They're in Brecon um, and they're, um, yeah, <laughs> and they're raising money to expand the brewery. It's really, really easy to get those key points across for that one. And then lastly, one we're going to talk about more in just a minute is Hope Organic Garden. Um, and the project was Hope Organic Garden looks for a, a chipper, um, a new shredder. So they're an organic community garden um, and they work um, with a lot of the local, get a lot of people from the local community involved, especially people with learning difficulties um, and they wanted to raise money for a new wood chipper. So just to kind of give, give you an idea um, that you need to be able to quickly and clearly um, explain what your project's about. And it really helps to just do a few exercises, which are in the first guide. There's some exercises to help you break down um, before you get started. Really clear in your head, so you can share it however you want to, in the street, to a passerby, on Facebook or Twitter. Um, okay, so I'm going to look at Hope Organic Garden a little bit more. So they raised £2,500 £2, for their new wood chipper. Uh, they are a community um, organic garden um, in a broth. A broth, I think I'll say <laughs> a broth. Um, and they have lots of volunteers coming into the garden, um, helping grow vegetables. And as we said before, they work with um, people with learning difficulties, offering them training and, and just kind of link it a really great way to link everybody together um, and growing some really tasty vegetables and uh, educating people too um, and they wanted to raise money for a wood chipper and they they really clearly communicate why as well in their project um, they needed it to they've got loads of fallen branches all over the um, garden and they needed to the chipper to mince them up into little pieces so that they can make compost quicker um, and they spend a lot of money buying compost in so this is a really great beneficial thing for for the garden it's going to save them money and, and good for the environment not kind of bringing stuff in from elsewhere so they communicated that fantastically in the project and uh, when they would have started they would have wanted to think about so so who's going to support it and a really good way to think about who's going to support you is identifying what the common ground is. So what is it about your project 
that's going to make people interested in it. Um, and for, for the Hope Organic Garden, we picked out four main things. So you can see, first one, um, we've got vegetables. People love local, delicious, fresh produce. Um, maybe they already buy stuff from there, or maybe it's you're going to, you know, reaching out to people that you think might be interested in buying stuff from the garden. Um, and next, it's uh, this is a really key one for, for this project, is people from the local area. So it's a really community-spirited local project. Um, and next, we've got um, people who, who want to support their, we really love that they're training people with learning difficulties. They might have learning difficulties themselves, or they might know someone who, who struggles, and they can really see the value in this, this project and what they do. They want to support it because they think it's really needed. Um, and then also you've got people who love gardening and think this is fantastic. Um, like a, somewhere everyone can go to get tips about how to garden. Um, just a lovely thing to have everybody getting together um, and, and getting in the dirt and growing some vegetables. So we've identified and identified the reasons why someone might be interested in the project. And then we want to kind of really find them. And this is an amazing tool to do that. We call this a network map. Um, and this is not only amazing for your crowdfunding project, but it's just great for any project um, at all. Uh, it's just such a great tool, um, such a great exercise to do. Um, and this template, template is in the guide, so you don't need to be scribbling it down now. Um, but I really recommend getting a huge bit of paper, getting lots of coloured pens um, and making your own version of this. Um, we've got a few little, um, little circles to get you started with. And I like to really start with people who are closest to you, your family and friends and the co your colleagues. Um, are easy to think of who your family is, isn't it? Um, and you might think at first, oh gosh, I don't know anyone. But actually, when you start to write it down, you start to get it visually on a piece of paper, it's, it's incredible how many people you realise you can get in touch with. And the really key bit to this is, you know, those people that you know, thinking, who do they know? Who can they get in touch with? And then the, the diagram starts to grow and get bigger and bigger. Um, it's a really, really great thing to see um, who, who is out there that I can get in touch with. So I would strongly recommend doing that um, from the get-go. Really great thing. And it will help you, again, this exercise is going to help you choosing your rewards because you know who you're aiming them towards and um, when you're trying to communicate your idea because you know who you're talking to. A really um, key thing to think about is the, the, the main motivation to why would someone pledge on your project? Because this can kind of come from two main camps. Uh, so you want to think about where the people um, who might support your project will fall in this diagram. So number one, we've got that they just believe in your idea. And we'll see this for a lot of charity projects. They think that what you're doing um, is, is something good for the world. It's something worth putting their money behind. They, they just want to give money because they think it's great. I think it's amazing. Um, and second, because they want what you're offering, they want the reward. Um, so a lot of business projects, that's the camp that they're going to be in because they're, you know, it's kind of like they're, they're, they're selling a, a product um, or a service. Um, a lot of projects, however, and especially the most successful projects, will manage to get into that little green sweet spot in the middle. Um, but that will really change from project to project. As you said, charity projects are probably going to be more on the, the believing in the idea um, and businesses more kind of wanting, wanting that physical thing. Um, if you kind of think of Hope, Hope Organic Garden, for example, they kind of really hit both really well um, because they were offering um, organic fresh veg boxes with summer produce and recipe books and calendars but also 
it's a really worthwhile cause. They're doing something really good for the community. So they really um, hit both of those camps nicely. Um, so if you think the kind of more one way than the other, have a little think, can we boost? Like, you know, can we make nicer rewards? Um, so it's really important uh, to kind of think where you lie on that because if it's more they believe in your idea, you need to focus on telling your story really quickly and really, really clearly. Um, it make it really clear what you're doing. And if it's the rewards, your page needs to have um, lots of kind of details about what they are and they need to be really good quality, really good value for money. Because that's, that's where the main motivation behind someone giving the project money is going to come from. So, you've got your crowd. We want to nurture it. We want to look after them. We want to tell them about what's coming. So in the run-up to your event, you want to kind of let out little teasers. Like you're going to imagine your project's a brand new film. You're not just going to release the film and not tell anybody about it. You're going to put out trailers, you're going to put out little teasers, um, get people excited about it, um, create a bit of a buzz around it. So when your project launches, they already know what it's about. They're already excited. They're like, yes, I'm convinced. I'm, I'm definitely supporting it. I'm behind it. Um, and also, your, your, your network, your crowd isn't a fixed thing. It's always forever growing. And, and you want to be actively trying to grow your crowd, especially in the run-up. If you don't think you've got quite enough people or there are lots of more different kinds of people that you'd like to be in touch with, now's the time to do it. Um, so there's some great tools that you can use to do that as well. Um, Facebook is one we're going to talk about um, and you can find so many groups and so many pages of people who are kind of going back to that common grounds map. Um, you can find groups of people who are going to be interested. Um, so for example, for Hope Organic Garden, just look up our growth. Um, all of the local community and um, other community groups in the local area you can so easily find here on Facebook and you can get in touch with them. And um, this is not only great for um, people who are going to support it when you run, but uh, it's also great to send these people in those groups the project before you, um, before you go live to ask for their opinion, get some feedback. Do they really quickly get what you're talking about? Is there anything that's missing? Um, so really important. Um, so before next time, I'm going to, there's three things that I really recommend you doing. Download those amazing PDF guides. I'm sure Victoria agrees with this. Um, and also really try and refine your idea. Get the idea straight. Know really clearly what your project is all about and get a start on that network map. Get that big piece of paper out and start making it. And if you've got any questions, um, you can get in touch with us via support at crowdfunder.co.uk. And in the next uh, webinar, uh, the next part of our, our series uh, on crowdfunding for, for Angus is on, at 3 p.m., so same, so same time on Thursday, the 5th of October, so next week. So thank you so much, Victoria, for joining and offering your fantastic advice. Um, and thank you very much. We'll see you next time.